And what's the deal with Halloween? The kids knock on the door. They say trick or treat. I want to know is who's picking trick? Why give us the option? Nobody's picking trick. We don't want it. We don't want the trick. Hello, and welcome to What the What, the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. Today we're talking about Halloween, and how did it become all about Reese Cups and Harley Quinn costumes? <laughs> and I'm not mad about that. <laughs> oh no. I love me some thick, sweet peanut butter cups. Yummy. What? But first, hit the subscribe button, maybe share the channel, like it. Leave a comment, there's a bell down there, notifications, all that stuff. The same thing you hear on every YouTube channel ever. <laughs> but it helps. So help me! <laughs> it's 43 AD and the Roman Empire's conquered most of the Celtic lands. And yes, you can say it Celtic or Celtic. Because I googled it. That's how I know. <laughs> Over the next 400 years, the two cultures blended a lot of their cultural history. Over the next 400 years, the two cultures blended some of their traditions. Two very specific Roman traditions that we need to talk about today. They are both in regards to the Celtic tradition of Sam Hain. <laughs> yeah! What? That word is pronounced sound? Sawan? Sawan? The Roman traditions were Feralia, showing respect for the dead, and Pomona, the Roman goddess of fruit and trees. Obviously. <laughs> So, Saun was an ancient Celtic festival that celebrated the New Year on November 1st. They believed that the night before the New Year, the realm of the dead crossed over into the living. They thought that the ghosts of the dead returned to Earth, resulting in killing all their crops, but also empowering their priests to foretell the future. These priests would create massive bonfires, as one would do, and invite the townspeople to burn their crops that were already dying, and sacrifice animals. And here's where we get our first glimpse of costumes, as those townspeople that were burning all this stuff would often wear animal heads. Ew. About 200 years later, we get Pope Gregory III, Pope Greg, who moves All Saints Day, a celebration of saints and martyrs, uh, from May to November 1st. Fast forward a few hundred years, and the Catholic Church decides to add All Souls Day to November 2nd, a day honoring the dead, bringing us another celebration of the dead, uh, costumes, and huge fires. Only now, the costumes are of saints, angels, and devils. It's an improvement over the animal heads, I gotta say that much. <laughs> At this time, the old Middle English word, All Hallow Meese, was used to refer to All Saints Day. And I have no idea if I said that word right. <laughs> Then the Celts started using All Hallows Eve to reserve to preserve. Then the Celts started using All Hallows Eve instead of Sound or Samhain or whatever. <laughs> I guess they were like, "Hey, Romans, you took our land, so we'll show you. We'll take your words. Take that." During this period, the poor would approach wealthy homes, and in exchange for um, treats, delicious pastries, and in return, they would say that they would pray for their the, the household's dead relatives. In Scotland and Ireland, the children would dress up in costumes and either tell jokes, sing, dance, and then they would get either a treat or money. Now let's jump forward to when we started colonizing America, also known as killing all the Native Americans and stealing their land because we're stupid, awful people. Real history is dark. And don't even get me started on Christopher Columbus, although that might be a future episode. During these early years, there was a lot of blending, again, of cultures from Native Americans and the new settlers. This resulted in a more of a unique Halloween from what Europe was seeing. Sharing stories of the dead, telling fortunes, and singing and dancing. Not sure where in this time period we decided that witches were real and that they needed to drown or burn. I mean, humans are just stupid. Over time, Americans... Over time, Americans pulled in more traditions as new settlers came, more immigrants, uh, potato famine, anyone? So now, they're adding costumes into the American new thing of Halloween, and they begin going to houses and asking for food or money. 
or treats or whatever. In the 1800s, Americans were getting more tricks than treats. So they began to push Halloween as a community event and offer parties for kids and adults together in one place. During this time, communities were asked to remove anything that was scary or gross from the decorations. This pushed for a Halloween that had less superstitions and a lot less religious connections. Although I'm sure some of you grew up being told that Halloween was the devil's day and that you couldn't go out and celebrate with your friends and go trick-or-treating and have fun. As we can now look back at where these traditions came from, we can clearly see that it is not the devil's day, mom. Mm -hmm. During the 1920s and 30s, there was a huge spike in vandalism, which resulted in a huge push to make Halloween a kid-focused holiday. By the 1950s, trick-or-treat became more about passing out candies to help prevent these kids from doing so many dang tricks. Tricks are for kids. Wait, I thought tricks were for rabbits. Throughout most of the world that celebrated Halloween, you would often see more of a ghost or like a witch costume. But as everything becomes more commercialized, traditions change. Thus giving us a bunch of Captain America and Harley Quinn costumes. So original. And if you don't think Halloween's been commercialized, <laughs> well check this out. Americans spend around $2.6 billion on candy for Halloween. And with decorations and events all built into that, it's about nine billion dollars what are we doing so thanks for watching and as always poop your pants like a big boy so thanks for watching and what did you learn today do you celebrate halloween and what's your favorite costume this year i'm going to go as an old hermit that doesn't want to go outside and see people at all because we don't need mass gatherings join me as we journey back two thousand years to uncover the history of Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's pumpkin scented. <laughs>